Welcome to First Down Sports. I'm your host, Ray Dunn. Sitting with me down at the end of the table is my brother, Chris. How's it going, eh? Also here right beside me is uh, our producer, Andy Jardine. <laughs> Yo. Yo. She's out every night. At the back of the room on sound and audio is my youngest brother, Nick Dunn. She's hey, up and gone again. We got a big show here tonight. Lots of great football on the weekend. But before we get into the football, we got to talk about our sponsors. If it's a Wednesday, Thursday, or next Tuesday, which we're going to be talking about, and you need yourself a cold beer, you got to go out and get yourself a Moose Light. This stuff is scary good. Scary good. Scary. scary. So scary. scary. <gasps> if you're a sports team, an organization, school, whatever the case may be, and you need hats, shirts, pens, jackets, you name it, you go see our buddies, the Doyles, Doyles Corporate Image. Doyles Rule. Doyles Rule. Doyles Rule. Doyles rule. Totally. And lastly, if your kitchen sucks, Andy. Yeah. If your kitchen sucks, quit your bitching, fix your kitchen. <laughs> fix your kitchen. It's done right sauce. Awesome. Done right sauce. Perfectly, perfectly delivered. I that's, love that. That's producing right there. That was that was producing one oh one. We're back live on Facebook again tonight. We're continuing with the uh, Facebook live coverage. We want to hear from you guys. So down at the end of the table, my brother Chris is going to be monitoring the Facebook room. Apparently, we've got a new uh, listener this week. Welcome to the First Down Sports, Adam. We look forward to uh, to talking to you. Uh, if you guys got questions, comments, you want to give us your thoughts, if you want to call me names because I called out uh, one of the Patriots players this week, you go ahead and take shots. Go ahead. We want to hear from you. Anyways, that's uh, Facebook Live. <laughs> Anything else we should touch on? I'm not going to apologize yet. I'm going to apologize at some point. Right. I'm not ready to now. <laughs> You're in a better mood now, though. Right? I'm in a better yeah. mood, but I'll tell you, you Pats fans pushed me to another level this morning. <laughs> it was a rocky morning for Ray. Rocky morning. Yeah. All right, let's get going. Let's get right into game one of the weekend, the first game of the weekend. And this was uh, this was quite a good game now. Patriots win this game 24 to 20. Brady yeah. comes out wearing a black bandage on his right hand after an apparent injury in practice, which needed stitches. Yeah. What did you guys think of this? Did you believe any of it? Did it have any factor in the game whatsoever? What did you guys think? Go ahead. You're ready. Yeah, you I don't that. know. Uh, you know, he said something at the end of it like there was 12 stitches or 14 stitches or something like yeah. that, or 20 stitches. 14 stitches. That's a lot of stitches. Yeah, I have no idea. You know, if there was. I don't believe it. I don't know. Who knows if there was anything under there? No, I, 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 I buy it. I don't think it, it, uh, it, it clearly didn't impact his throwing. And, um, yeah, it's, it, who knows? He he said uh, he was he was playing it off a little bit afterwards, saying uh, you know the only thing that really hurt to do was the handoff, and I'm not gonna you know I, we're not gonna end this on a handoff. And then he said it might be a little arrogant of him to say uh, that it affected the game. Yeah, and he has a hard time with arrogant. You know. Yeah, right? yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, Chris, Chris? I, I I think whoever leaked the story should get matching stitches because snitches get stitches. Uh, okay. Right. I think there was supposed to be an N in there somewhere that, <laughs> that you completely stitches. missed. Stitches. Yeah. Let's, let's talk. Let's talk about Blake stitches Bortles. Get stitches, folks. <laughs> Snitches. So Bortles comes out in this game. Now, I mean, Bortles has been taking a lot of heat this year. Yeah. And and all you've been hearing about all year is who's going to be the quarterback for Jacksonville next year. And and I want to get into that in a second. But Bortles came out and looked great in the first in the first quarter. He came out, put up fourteen yep. points. They were up fourteen to three. Solid. Overall, in the game he goes twenty three for thirty six, two hundred ninety three yards and a touchdown. He didn't put any yards on with his legs this week, which I was surprised. But what did you guys think of Bortles? How what did you think of his game coming into this? One of his best games that he's ever played. Yeah, yep. the, you could tell the Patriots were ready to keep him in the pocket. Uh, and not have him run. He played great. Yep. Um, the only thing he could have done was 
truly come through when they absolutely needed it to happen right and when you're on a team where you know you're not getting all the calls and and i'm trying not to you know make make it sound like i'm anti-patriots here or anything like that right but you know brady always has enough chances to go and win the game and he is the greatest of all time and i'm not comparing blake bortles Mm. whatsoever this is how blake bortles goes to the next level when he is presented with the opportunity to go down and win the game go do it yeah came up short Otherwise, he played great. Um, Jacksonville is in a tough spot because a lot of them still think, you know, that team is primed for Super Bowl as long as they go find a quarterback. So they're still not so- uh, sold on this uh, on this guy. Yeah. Um, man, I thought he played really good. I thought he did too, Chris. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing that I, 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 I look at is, like, I know there's some talk about uh, the penalties, and, you know, there's no penalties on, on – uh, on New England, and our new listener has a, has a good one. point. Just well, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, I think there's Holding one. on a kickoff. Yeah, something. yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. No, but uh, uh, Adam, uh, our new listener, Adam Lund, is, is saying that it was the first time that Jacksonville lost after uh, him not throwing a, a pick all season. They yeah. were 10-0. and 0. Yeah. So he, he did his part, except for there's one TSN turning point, I call it, where they were, I think there was like two minutes and 12 seconds left they did a delay a game, so they didn't snap the ball. Mm. That was on them. So that's on them. So you know the calls yeah. are going to go New England away. You just don't want to give them any freebies. So well, we, we've we jumped right to the end of the game. No, no. That's, that's the beginning of the game. That's okay. I mean, no, that's, well, no, that was at the end of the game, that play. No, no. No, no, no. This is just before the second half ended. Okay. Just before the second half ended. They they didn't they didn't snap they uh, that's the second quarter second quarter okay second yeah. half in sorry yeah yeah okay game. right yeah, yeah. sorry it's good. so when they when he snapped the ball he snapped it not on time right uh, resulting in a in a delay of game and he mm-hmm. threw the ball and he and he nailed the court uh, the, the tight end Mercedes uh, Mercedes Lewis Lewis yeah. off to the side and they had a first down right but because they delayed it and they were up two touchdowns to a field goal. Yeah. If they could have put another touchdown there, that could have been a serious pressure against. They could have changed how they played the game. Right. The defense could have played a little more aggressive. They would have had a, a, even if it was a field goal or a touchdown. But you gave Brady the ball back with two minutes left, and he does what Brady does. He puts up seven points. New game. Four well, points away. On, on that on that Patriots final drive of the first half. Let's get into these two penalties because there was two penalties in particular that I felt was the TSN turning point in this game as far as momentum goes. Momentum changed coming out in the second half because of this. Brady makes a pass downfield. Gronk stretches out for the ball. Barry Church comes probably about 20 yards across the field to make the play, puts his shoulder right into Gronk's chest, and the helmets hit which knocked Gronk out of the game with a concussion. Yep. Now, this is where I got into trouble the other day because... <laughs> you still I, in I, trouble right J- now? Jason, I, Jason, I, Jason Terrace is there. Is I can't believe you're not in more trouble. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I posted this on saying it was my favorite play of the weekend. Yeah. And, and again, I took a lot of heat for this, but it wasn't that long ago that Gronk pulled that uh, WWE elbow drop on yeah. the rookie uh, Tredavious weight white and 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 he could have seriously injured that player with his antics that game and in sports we've talked I don't enjoy hockey anymore there's a lot of things I don't enjoy about ho- or, or sports and that is because I believe in sports there's a payback system when you pull stuff like that on the field. If if something like that happens in baseball, you know a pitcher is going to try to throw the ball in your Whammy. In your, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's let's, let's let's listen to our replay on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's What's great. What's going on back there? Yeah, yeah. great. Just a quick great. just a quick volume it's check. Non-stop yeah. professionalism back there. <laughs> non <Sorry>. pro- but- <laughs> I was wondering what was going on. Oh, but, was my belly but that's what I'm saying is when I saw Gronk go off the field, that was the yeah. football gods paying him back for what took place in that Buffalo game. What are your thoughts? All right. So um, I understand Buffalo Bills fans, you're extra sour at Gronk, not just for you know destroying you for years, but yeah. that Tredavious White, honestly, that was, you know, I'm trying to stay neutral here. That's dirtier than anything that's ever happened to Gronk. Uh, for him to that play, but whatever, we're past that play now. Yep. Um, it su- it, like you know what it sucks, but I agree a hundred percent with Richard Sherman and how he assessed this. Right, like 
if you lead with your shoulder, your head follows. There's nothing you can do about it. Right. Now, and, and in the speed of the game like that, yes, Gronk is big, but when he catches the ball, he ducks down to, to brace for it. Yeah. The heads collide. Yeah. There were only two other options for, for Church. He could take Gronk, go super low the way they all do. Yeah. And take out his knees and potentially wreck both those knees. Yeah. Or just stand there and let him catch the ball. Mm. Now, do do any of us want to watch football where that is what the defenders have to do? From now on, they have to make the judgment like that and stand there and watch them catch the ball. Well, appara- apparently Patriots fans do. Well, I got something for Patriots. Let me. Uh, Marcus Williams kind of yeah. kind of tried that out and it didn't go well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I mean, honestly, it, it, it sucks, and 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 definitely that was. Listen, safeties, they live for that play. Yeah. So that play was meant to inflict pain, and it was meant to make sure that the pass wasn't caught. Did he actually mean to go helmet to helmet with him and concuss him? I don't think so at all. And there's, you know, it sucks that these plays happen. And uh, I'm joking. I was joking with you guys today. Here's my pitch to the NFL. This is the only way. And guys, this is going to sound ridiculous. This is the only way we can fix this. You can't lead with your shoulder without your head following, so you have to start hitting with something that your head doesn't follow. So here's my suggestion. In the secondary, hits in the secondary, you can no longer use your upper body to hit whatsoever. We're going to put shin pads on all the players. We're going to train them in martial arts, and we're going to completely legalize <laughs> drop kicks and tripping. So from now on, when they're, when Gronk's about to make that catch, you don't want to go helmet to helmet? No problem. You're going the leg drop. You're going uh, you're going Shawn Michaels super kick to the face. Uh, actually, we can, make, we can make kicks to the head illegal. No big deal. Kick to the chest. There won't be in- incidental head contact. Yeah. If you want to cheap out a little bit, you trip the guy, but whatever. No more head to head. <laughs> That's the only thing you can do, guys, other than it becoming flag football. Yeah. Can I give a, just a quick take? And I, I, I think it was, a, I think it was a good take. play. It was not dirty. He, 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 he came there as a football play, but I still think, def, by the rules of the NFL, the helmets hit. It's penalty. And, uh, absolutely, yeah. and, and, and Romo called it. Like Romo was was spot on with a lot of the calls that were going on, and Romo's right away. Yeah, you got to call it. You have to call it. Yeah. But but Patriots fans were looking for people to agree with them that it was a dirty hit. It was not a dirty hit. No. It was a bang bang play by a safety. Unfortunately, helmets hit. Yeah. Is it a penalty? Yes, it's a penalty. Was it worth the penalty? Absolutely, it was worth the penalty. Listen, yeah, K Dog says it's a penalty. We say move on. All right, let's move on. <laughs> but here's where the atrocious thing comes in. On the next play, Brandon Cooks is going down the left sideline. Yeah. And AJ Boye is following him along the sideline. Flag is pa- or flag is thrown uh on this play. And Cooks has been running out of bounds for at least five to ten yards. By the time that ball's even in the area, yeah, this was the killer. This is what set New England up for that touchdown. What are, yeah. your, what are your thoughts on that? That was that one was BS, and that's the one that I'm hearing the most about. We're gonna get to the Miles Jack call later, guys. So you know it, that you're bringing it up in the chat. That this was the one that I'm hearing the most people freak out about. I know you you listened to first take as well, and Kellerman was destroying this one. It was an uncatchable ball, like you said. The guy's out of bounds. That's a Patriots call. Sorry, Pats fans. Yeah. that's a Patriots. It was call. a Patriots. Call. That was crap, and that led to them, you know, having ten points at the half. Like if they and, don't have that, and the shame is, is if if Boye would have just let uh, laid off and let Cooks catch the ball out of bounds. It would have been illegal participation back to the line of scrimmage, back ten yards. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, out of bounds first. Yeah, because if you go out of bounds, yeah, yeah. you can't be the first one to play the ball. Yeah. yeah. So these are those are quick, but you know what? These are the calls that are going to unfortunately happen. That's a look at you. Got to embrace like that's that is a part of the game. But th- those are the ones that when something obviously goes wrong, if you're going to have league. Uh, instant replay, especially under two minutes. It was under two yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. The league's got to jump in there to the referee and say, "Hey, you guys got to look at this one." Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I, I do I have comparison to sports like basketball, like does that. Yeah. Where they go, hey, mm-hmm. let's let's go make sure that got it, that we got it right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they do it, and I, and I think it's it's relatively fast, wouldn't you say, uh, Andy? It's pretty good. I think yeah. I think there's a lot more to it in football. I'm convinced too that there's some type of sponsorship with uh, Microsoft that they have to be seen with those stupid pads. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's no question. Like they're like, no so question. They're like, hey, you guys have to go spend 30 seconds looking at that thing so Microsoft Surface can get their ad. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, but but yeah, I think it... The little paperclip guy. It is quite a bit faster. Um, 
Chris, I mean, just the size of the court, right? The the um, the ref in basketball can jog over to the scores table and look really quickly. Yeah. It's, it's not that easy on a, on a big football field. No, that's right. So I it, just wish those things would happen to the other like with the other way a lot more, right? Yeah. The Patriots are super disciplined. They're the most disciplined team of all time, but you know everybody slips up once in a while. Absolutely, you, you know, and everybody gets a bad call against them once in a while, and there should be a few more. So it's it's fourteen to ten. We go into halftime. We come out in second half, and for those of you that really don't know Doug Marone, Doug Marone was the head coach of the Buffalo Bills. In Buffalo, they used to call him Conservative Marone. Yeah. And in the fourth quarter, in, in the first half, the Jags had all their success outside the tackles. Yep. And on every first down play, he ran Fournette between the guards mm -hmm. for nothing. I don't understand why they had such great momentum from the first half, and then they come out in that kind of conservative mo uh Play calling in the second half. Wait, I maybe I'm remembering this wrong, right? I thought they came right out and scored on their first drive. The Jags. They got they got a field goal. Yeah, they got a field goal. Oh, I thought. Yeah, okay. they got a field yeah. goal. Yeah. yeah, but but if you if you watch the tape, a lot of their first down calls was Fournette right up the middle between the guards, rather than getting them outside the tackles. Whereas where they were getting all the yardage in the first half. You know, I, I thought Hackett did a fairly good job. You know, leading you know leading up to where they got to. I, I think the big the biggest uh, thing was how close the game was in the second half, and you're you're going to see a little more conservative. They're trying to run the clock, so yeah, you know they did have some 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 outside uh, uh, success. But what happens in the second half? What Belichick's going to do is you're going to you're you're thinking they're going to shore it up, and they're going to say no, we're we're going to not give you that anymore. Right? They were probably giving them looks that there was up in the middle. But Belichick did a good job of like shoring up that, shoring up the sides, and they they were going with whatever was the defense was showing, right? Yeah. Well, Fournette is a between the tackles runner. He so is. Yeah. That's where he makes his money, right? Yeah. So well, they weren't having much success there. That's for sure. <clears throat> so we get into the second half. Brady does what Brady does. He starts pulling. Oh, before we get there, let's talk about Miles Jack. So Andy, uh, Miles Jack, he. Is there? There's a ball passed, and it's going to Burkhead, if I remember correctly. Okay. And he's running down the uh, sideline, and Miles Jack tackles him, and in the tackle, the ball ends up in his hands. It was actually a double pass behind. Right. The, right. Yeah. Back. Over talk to, about that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, pass. Uh, oh no! The, it was Dion Lewis. That, Dion Lewis. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was a pass back to Dion Lewis, and Dion Lewis was running. Miles Jack uh, tackles him on the way to the ground. He he knocks the ball loose, and the ball comes out and fumbles. Uh, and he rolls away from Dion Lewis, and he recovers the fumble, and he gets up, and the 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 play is whistled dead. Yeah. Uh, and Don't when get you it. and you when you watch it, he like I mean yes replay right. It's clear that by the time possession was taken over again by Jack, there was no contact at all between the two of them. He could have ran for a touchdown. Yeah. They whistled it dead. And then the NFL comes back and said, look, we had to review it to make sure that the ball was coming out, that Deion Lewis wasn't down. Well, the fact that it was coming out, the whistle came after the recovery, they get the ball. But unfortunately, they threw the refs under the bus on this one and just basically said the ref blew the whistle too fast. Sure, we can't look at it anymore after that. But, well, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you this. Jacksonville's lucky because this could have gone back to the Patriots because it could have been ruled as an inadvertent whistle. And if it would have been ruled as an inadvertent whistle, they could have got the ball back. The ball, the choice goes back to the offense if they want the play to stand or if they want to redo the play. Can you imagine that that whole place would have so, been? So, so New England could have gotten the ball back if they would have pushed for an inadvertent whistle there. That would have made the entire NFL like immediately get on the bus and head to NFL <laughs> or to, to New England. That would have been a problem. Yeah, that would have been that a problem. That would not have been yeah. good. Tom Brady ends up putting a. Uh, uh, come back together as always. He hits Amendola in the end zone. Two forty-eight remaining in the in the game, and there's a shot that you see uh, an official laughing with the players in the end zone. Did you catch this? Yeah, it's really yeah. bad. It was really bad. It's just bad. It, it does optics. look bad. It's bad optics. It yeah. does look bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you you brought up that one point of like, uh, why do they play conservative? 
Again, uh, the new listener, Adam, had a good point, is that the teams are playing a little scared to, to the Pat. Like, it's the New England, uh, like, mental game. Yeah. You know, if you think of uh, compar- comparable to, like, Tiger Woods back in the day when guys are sometimes up three. I, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty good comparison where they're up three strokes and you should feel pretty comfortable, but no, it's Tiger. Yeah. Tiger can come back and he can yeah. close that gap fast. Yeah. And then you see them starting to play off. I, I think that's – you really have to overcome that because – you know Brady can 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 come back from a seventeen points. That's no big deal. Yeah, I, yeah. I can be, I can come back from that. Yeah. yeah, right. They'll take advantage of it all every time. They'll play sound. They won't make mistakes. And if you make one, they're they're going to get you. Cap yeah. ones. Jags did have a chance to come back in this game mm-hmm. on a uh, third and eighteen, I believe it was. Yep. Or fourth and eighteen, 14, actually. 18. Uh, and it was a pass where uh, Gilmore. Stefan Gilmore your made the buddy. stop. Yeah. Yeah. That you're also oh, the worst, he's so he's the, the best corner now. The worst cornerback in the league. No, now, now he's you know, the best. Worst the best. So, you know, when you um when you look at that play, Bortles could have threw the ball and let him a little bit more. Yeah. And it could have been a, a catch. It was a good play by Gilmore, but you know what? Like, I mean, I don't uh, some people may not have argued if you threw a PI on that. Yeah. Right, so you just look at that play. It was a great. It was a really good play, and he was covering the guy, man. And yay, yay, he was good. It could have been a slightly better throw, but he made a good play. Yeah, yeah. when he had to. Yeah. Just to finish this game off again, one last thing here. Uh, at the end of the game, the official uh, comes up and pats Tom Brady on the chest. Good game. What do you guys think about that? I think they they should be well, like a little bit better coached. Of just stay away from the players. Do your job. Let them do. You want to see them after. Do that kind of stuff. Hey, good job. Yeah. Like, don't do it on the field. Like, the fans are looking for everything. Yeah. And they should be made aware of it. Like, come on. I, I totally get that. As as a referee, if, I, if I'm working a big game uh, in, a, in a championship, uh, there's no question. I've, I, it, the, the quarterback's the guy you're responsible for all game long. So the referee has a very good relationship usually with that, that player. So I have no problem with the referee going up and say, hey, Good job tonight. Good congratulations or whatever. I, yeah. I have an interesting point, if you don't mind me sharing. Is yeah. So Adam mentions that. So the Gronk injury helped the Pats because the Jags were all man and used Randy yeah. on him. It's is true. That, do you think? Do you think that's a absolutely? Yeah. If if yep. you went Good before point. Gronk, uh, I, I somebody else talked to me about this today too. Before Gronk went out. The, the way they were using that safety was really throwing Brady off. Yeah. And as soon as Gronk was out, well, now they were playing Game forward change. receivers, and, and, and they had to. Good point. They didn't uh, change their defense the way they needed to. Yeah. All right. So that was the AFC Championship. We know New England's moving on to the uh, Super Bowl. We'll find out who's going to the Super Bowl uh, for the NFC in a second. But before that, I got a couple trivia questions for you guys. Let's go. Let's, let's go. It. Let's see if the new guy can get this one. Why, why don't we? We'll hold off by answering. So let's give a little pause if you don't mind. A little one. Little yeah. pause. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here's the first one. Why don't we write it down? We got our things here. No, you, you won't have time okay. for that. Okay. 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 In the last ten Cursive. years, in the last ten years, who is the only player who's averaged over ten yards per carry while running the ball or running for over a hundred yards in a playoff game? Let me repeat that. In the last 10 years, who's the only player to average over 10 yards per carry while running for over 100 yards in a playoff game? Mm. So it's in one game. One game. In one game, this guy went for over 100 yards and averaged 10 yards a carry? Yeah, who's the only player who's averaged over 10 yards per carry while running for 100 yards over 100 yards in a playoff game. So it doesn't matter what round it was in. It was just doesn't a doesn't matter, game. yeah. Playoff well, it's game. it's got to be a home run hitter like I Jamal know. Charles or something, I know. Right? That's um, what I'm trying to think of. Uh, uh, I don't know. LT. Who's averaged oh, 10, years. 10 yards Jeez, in the last 10 yards. Yeah, 10, 10 years. years yeah. Has averaged over 10 yards per carry while running for over 100 yards in a playoff game. Adrian Peterson. Pa- Peterson? Peyton. Who? Ten Walter. Years. Ten years. Oh, 10 years. In the oh, last geez. 10 years. Okay. Hold on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very complex uh, thing. Uh, but I, I can, well, n- never mind. I, I, I think I'm way off, so I'll just go with uh, with Dunn from Tampa Bay. Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> okay. And, and the only other person that's done it in this century, going back to 2004, is Michael Vick. Michael Vick. Isn't that okay. interesting? Yeah. yeah. We, had, yeah. we had a few guesses, Blunt. 
Marshawn Lynch. And then Andy and his wife Leslie mentioned uh, Mar, spelled Mar M A R Sean Lynch. We yeah. don't even know what that is, Andy. All right, All right yeah. let's go to the next yeah. one. Let's keep going. Ed, Ed, yeah. He was thinking of the Beast Mode run that time. That's a good guess, actually. Yeah. When, the, when the Jacksonville Jaguars <laughs> hosted the Buffalo Bills, the game featured Doug Marone coaching against his former team. Who is the only other active coach who's coached in a playoff, te- in a playoff game against a team where he was formerly the head coach? Huh. i got to repeat that one more time. When the Jacksonville Jaguars hosted the Buffalo Bills, the game featured Doug Marone, who was coaching against his former team. Oh, yeah. this who is the only other active head coach who has currently coached in a playoff I I, I game against it. a team where he was formerly the head coach? I think I have it. Well, I have it if, if you're going to count Gruden as active now. Gruden does not count. <laughs> Darn. Jack, uh, Jack Del Rio. No. It's not... Belichick because the Browns weren't around. And I thought maybe next, last year, Jack. In the playoffs, yeah. In Adam. the playoffs. Pete Carroll? The, there you go. Pete, Pete Carroll. There you go. 2014. Pete, Pete Carroll. Carroll. There, there you go. go. There Mike go. Holmgren, no. No. All right. Here's your last question. And you got to think about this one, boys. Well, we weren't thinking about those right. two. I, no, no, no. <laughs> what, is the, what is the only division... In which three of the four teams have never made a number one overall pick in the Super Bowl era. Hey, we're, we'll give that one more time. What is the only division in which three of the four teams have never made a number one pick in the Super Bowl era? <laughs> I'm going to say the NFC East. The NFC East is correct. The NFC East, Jeez. where only Cow- the Dallas Redskins, they've been good, like where only the Dallas Cowboys have picked number one. Eli Manning uh, was a first round pick, but the Gi- the Giants traded for him after he was chosen by San Diego. Yep. So hmm. there you go. Nice. Good job, Andy. You got two good. of the three. Yep. Awesome. All right, let's move on. Let's get into the NFC. Let's do it. Fly, Eagles, fly. Let's do it. The crowd was crazy. Did you guys see the crowd in the in, I mean, this crowd was one of the best crowds I've ever seen in a playoff game. What's with all these stories about fans getting arrested for punching horses? I don't know <laughs> what is, the hell's going on. Playing the Broncos, punching horses has <laughs> got to stop. I mean, I know Vikings <laughs> rode horses, maybe, but come on. Anyway, you can associate that with anything. <laughs> yeah, and the video, you guys are, I, I know you're, I don't want to throw you off track here, but you guys saw the video of the, I think I posted in our <laughs> yeah, conversation, yeah, 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 the guy like yeah. when he's running after the. <laughs> and he runs right. right into the pole. I found, I saw a story the next day saying he was okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But, he, but he had to go he get checked out. Yeah. I was really thinking about that too, if he was all right. Yeah, yeah thanks. Was not. Yeah. <laughs> Jerks. We That's talked. We talked injuries. going into this game. This game was one hundred percent going to come down to Foles versus Keenum, and Keenum got the Vikings rolling right away on the first drive. They came down, put up seven points, and then the Eagles never looked back, putting up thirty-eight unanswered points. What's your thoughts on this game? Well, I, I thought I thought they came out storming. I, I thought the Minnesota was gonna. They came down, put a quick seven. Yeah. Like, geez, this is going to be a fast game. They're, they must be psyched about. Playing the first home game in a Super Bowl, they're all fired up, and that air deflated pretty fast. <laughs> the, the Eagles are so good at bo- on both lines of scrimmage, mm. and they were able to to get to Keenum. And then Nick Foles had an out of body experience, oh. and he has this every once in a while. I mean, it's not like the guy hasn't done things in the NFL, but the moment he does something that amazing, he tends to follow it up with like a year and a half of crap. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, total out of body experience. Like, I mean, he was. Like that one throw where he somehow bought all that time. Like he's he's less mobile than Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah. and he somehow bought the time, climbed up into the po- pocket. It was it was crazy. Yeah, well, you know, you know, three hundred and fifty two yards and three touchdowns. My 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 one theory of like why this went as bad as what it did. You know, little things can happen in a playoff game that can rattle rattle you. So when when uh, when uh, oh geez uh, the, the starting quarterback uh, uh, Minnesota Keenum? yeah Keenum He's so when Keenum, Keenum, yeah. when Keenum dropped back and they they hit his arm and it went out fall, like a little fumble little pass and they they picked it off that was the that was the turning point and I think they they never re, re, they never turned back from that they just yeah. the Eagles went full speed and they just could not get in the rhythm after that and yeah. he just seemed to be so rattled 
that he just can put his head on straight. Those are the difference between the, like the quarterback like of, a, of a Brady where he could throw three picks and then come out and look like a superstar. Who cares? Yeah. Like yeah. Those, get, those plays are far behind him. 300 yards and, and three touchdowns on what was considered the best defense in the NFL is a big yeah, deal. number one. So, Ray, you threw some trivia at us. I heard this one today. Yeah. I'm going to throw it at you. Sure. Who do you think the last quarterback uh, is uh, to put up 300 yards and three touchdowns on the Minnesota Vikings? Ooh. Did it happen this year? No. No. Last quarterback to put up 300 yards and three touchdowns against the Vikings. It's a trick question. It was Nick Foles. Was it Nick Foles? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So I thought that was interesting that uh, he apparently has it out for them. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I tell you, you, you know, we, we, we talked about these two teams possibly having two of the best defenses left in, in, in the playoffs, along oh, yeah. with the Jaguars. And but the, Jaguars. the Eagles, those guys are flying all over the place. Chris Long looks so strong on that coming off beast. that end. Yeah, he was yeah. a beast. And y- you look at this Philadelphia roster, you got Blount and, 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 and Chris Long that we were just talking about. They're two former Patriots going against their team in the playoffs. That, yeah. That's, that's going to help a that's little bit be for the Eagles. But um, you got to be confident as a New England going in, though. I'm oh sorry. yeah, you be, absolutely. You when be, you look at the like odds, yeah. When you look great. at the odds, but yeah. that being said, that <clears throat> defense, I I think that defense was flying around much quicker than than Jacksonville looked. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what happens? And I don't know if you're going to ask this, but like, what happens if somehow Foles goes in and wins the Super Bowl? Man. Woo. Like Carson Wentz is still the starter. Yeah. Like he was he would have been the MVP. No, trade him. He's still the starter. <laughs> what do you do? Like and then Foles is still under contract with them for two more years and he's cheap. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is perfect. I don't think you do anything. No. Right? Leave it. Yeah. Well, I you know, I want to back up the train for a second because we were talking about Bortles. Hard to back a train and, up, and, and, and 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 one of the things it's like a two hour process. One right? of the things that I, I wanted to ask you earlier was about Bortles, because there's been so much talk about Manning, uh Smith Cousins, yeah. What does what does the Jaguars do now about Blake Bortles? Are they still finding another quarterback, or do they stick with this guy now? It, it, I that's what I mean. I don't know. Like, how do you not stick with him? But how right. do you stick with him? Right? Because you kind of seen what you know. Man, I'm telling you, if they were playing anybody else with the Patriots, they win that game. Yeah. Right. You know, you, you, they, the only team that could beat them is a team that didn't get penalized. Yeah. In, in like. It, it, but I don't know what you do. I don't know. Like uh, that's gonna, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with, they in the cannot, offseason. There. They cannot afford to pay Kirk, uh, Kirk Cousins, right? I mean, if you look at Jacksonville, it was great drafting. They loaded up on the defense, but all these guys are third, four year players, and they're going to come up and need big contracts. And like the Jags are going to lose half their team here pretty soon. Well, here I want to go back to earlier in the year when Kansas City walked into New England and smacked them in the opening game of the season, yeah. they had a really tough time covering Tyreek Hill. Yep. And Jeffries is pretty close to the same speed as that He's guy. Fast, yeah. He is so fast. How are they going to cover Jeffries in this game? I mean, the same way they always take away the deep threats, right, is, um, you know, they, they there's always safety help on that side, and yeah. they take their chances everywhere else. And I think that's really all, that that's all they're going to be able to try to do. And you got to get to Foles before Foles has a chance to launch the ball. And getting to Foles yeah. is a little easier than some. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, there was a, a couple of few good ideas. Transition tag, you could use the same with Keenum. You know, how you can maybe keep keep them uh, on on the team. Yeah. Uh, I like that. That's that, Those are smart moves that some teams uh, don't Ke- seem to Ke- utilize. Keenum's an inch. Well, the transition tag's a weird thing, right? But, yeah, you could, you could do the transition tag. It, it saves you a little bit of money, but it forces you to allow another team to negotiate your player's contract, and it's right. up to you if you want to do anything. But, yeah. but actually, it's not bad because not everybody's going to be knocking on Blake Bortles' door. Case Keenum seemed like a no-brainer for the for the franchise tag until you see him get annihilated by the the Eagles like that, and you're thinking, well, what do they do now? Yeah, I mean, you got to stick with them, but and then Sam Bradford's going to be leaving. They're all free agents, all their yeah. quarterbacks. It's weird, but Very Bortles weird. is a Bortles is the hardest thing to figure out. What? Is um, what do you do? Well, what I think do do? I think Bortles again brought up on the board is you know he didn't even have uh, uh, Robinson their their number one receiver yeah and they did that well so next year you know they're going to have two solid uh wide receivers uh, adding more more uh from the draft i, I think they're nothing but up for this team yeah. oh they're going to be a good team again next year but. yeah well we've got our super bowl set 
Yep. New England versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Dun, here's, dun, dun. here's a couple facts for you. Fun facts. Okay. 12 of the last 13 winners of the Super Bowl have won white jerseys. Oh, and guess what? And the guess Patriots. who's what? Patriots are wearing white Patriots for the Super Bowl. White. Yep. How so can they you are? do that? The bad guy is wearing white? <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> you know, the NFL. Right off the bat, they got the advantage. That, sound, that sounds like, uh, you know, Pat, well, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. But, you know, you really do want them not to be wearing white. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. never. So they, they've already, they already got history stats on their side. 1.5 million Americans will call in sick on February 5th, the day after Super Bowl. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Okay. Here's another Especially big... this guy. Here's another... Well, not an American. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and, American. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Jeez, and, so I've also, and I've already booked the day off. Yeah, me too. I, I, I took vacation. <laughs> I took too. vacation. We're going to be at the Fox, so you need to take vacation. <laughs> right. And I'm not an American, Chris. An American. As we know, these these <laughs> these fact. these big companies pay big bucks for commercials. Here's the stat for 2018. In 2018, 166 thousand dollars per second yep. for these commercials this year. Wow, is that big money? Holy smokes! Big yeah. money. Yeah, big money. We're not going to get into our Super Bowl picks uh, this week. We are going to save that uh, for later on. How do we get? How are we going to do this? Are we going to make our picks at the debate next week, yeah. or are we going to make them the day of the Super Bowl? How do you guys want to do this? I say when we're there. Yeah, let's do this. Well, we're going to be at Fox for both yeah. of these things. So let's wait right. and do it right at the Super Bowl. All yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. All right. Before we get out of here, Andy, why don't you tell everybody about what's going on next week with the uh, with the debate? So next week at the Fox and the Hound, uh, when are we going on? Eight? We're going to go live at 8 p.m. on Facebook Live. So we'll be going live on Facebook Live, but we'll be right there at the bar. Uh, and it's the, uh, I guess it's going to be annual because this is two years. Two years in a row. So the annual debate show. Uh, we're going to find, uh, it's pretty easy to find some Patriots fans to come up and uh, debate on behalf of the Patriots. And yeah. we're trying to find three, I, I think three Eagles fans. We're, we're going to get some, some Eagles fans. Yeah. We're going to have some teams come up. We're going to almost like, I don't know, family feud where you pit one against each other each time. The winning team who wins the debate, and we're the judges, right? We're, we're, we'll be the judges. Good luck, Patriots fans. But yeah. anyways, um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> now, stuff, there, there's going to be trivia questions. There's going to be some games. Yeah. There's going to be some different things that we're going to do, and you'll get points for each for each yeah. question, yeah. So we got specials going on that night. I think how much is it for a pitcher of beer? Pitchers of beer are going to go for eleven ninety nine a pitcher, and Woo. that's all Moosehead products on tap, which includes Alpine. Which includes Alpine. Thank me later, guys. Huh? All right. <laughs> and I think Moosehead by the bottle. What? How much are those five? Uh, uh, no, no, no bottle. It's all draft. All draft, all draft specials. Draft. Yeah. Glasses are two seventy five. Pitchers are eleven bucks. Yeah. They also have a bacon cheeseburger with fries special for eight ninety nine. Delicious. Yes. Wash that down with some Alpine. Then That's get some Pepto Bismol ready. <laughs> three three quarters of our Pats fans yeah. are going to go just for that special. And if you're on the winning team, um, you get a one hundred dollar bar tab to share between the three of you. Uh, to wow. uh, to purchase these wonderful Moosehead products and or for or for your fan base to depend on how many. Patriots or Eagles fans show up. You got a hundred dollar bar tab uh, that you can use that day or the day of the Super Bowl if you want to come back to the Fox for the Super Bowl. There you go. That's right. So that's next week, January thirtieth. Be at the Fox and the Hound. It's over in Rearview, uh, in the in the Rearview Mall. It's yeah. going to be a great time. We had a blast last year. Yeah. Uh, Justin Robichaux from the Atlanta Falcons won last year over uh, Mike Fougier, which. I'll talk about him in a second, but uh, uh, so let's see this year what happens. Let's get out and have some fun with it. It was a good time last year. Awesome. There you go. And then uh, are we going going to talk about Super Bowl? Or? Well, Super Bowl, let's talk about it real quick. Uh, that's February the 5th on Sunday. Yep. Uh, the game starts at 7 o'clock our time. We're going to be going live that afternoon from the Fox around 4.30 in the afternoon before the game. And uh, we'll have open mics for so people from the crowd can come up, 
share their thoughts, debate with us, and 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 we'll be going on halftime and after the game as well. Yep. Yeah. And this, I believe, similar specials will be available. Yeah, there will be lots of food specials. Again, all Moosehead product on tap. Eleven dollars for pitchers and two seventy five for a glass. Yep. And again, that includes Alpine. That includes Alpine. I Alpine. made sure. I made sure of it. Before we get out of here now, Nick, you've been pretty Warning. quiet back there uh, th- tonight. We got Myler in the, in the crowd. Uh, you've Myler. been pretty quiet. Uh, <laughs> any final thoughts before we get out of here? Jack Eichel scored overtime. All yeah, right. Last <laughs> night, finally won a game. <laughs> Woo. Wow. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. That is huge. 12 wins. <laughs> My, Myler just joined in. He said, I heard there was food. So he, he came. <laughs> oh, yeah. My, My, Myler will take the uh, trip for Fredericton for an eight ninety nine cheeseburger he just, with bacon. He, he just felt, if someone didn't say an eight ninety five cheeseburger, i got to get online. <laughs> Andy, what's your final thoughts? No, I just hope to see you guys uh, in person. Um, if not, please be there on Facebook, and we'll be interacting the same way that we are now for uh, for both shows. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you don't know how to find the Fox and Hound, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think just walk by all the call centers. I there you go. It's I think right it's there. the only thing in that mall that isn't a call center. So uh, just keep walking. Fun. <laughs> keep walking. <laughs> You'll eventually find it. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, any questions, uh, any comments that we need to address before we get out of here? Yeah, I, I think this went pretty uh, smooth. We had some good interaction here on, uh, on the fly. We did have a trivia question. Yeah, let's take uh, it. Let's, let's go back down here. So I'm going to find that for you, Adam. Uh, let's see. Uh, Adam has new, the trivia no, question? No, this is, a new, uh, this is uh, the, the better Adam, Adam Lund. Okay, all right, Adam Lund. Because if it was Adam Myler, I was going to say Burger King. I, I, Burger think, King? I think Adam Lund <laughs> wants us to call McDonald's. him a hot shot. McDonald's. Right? Hot shot? Hot uh, shot. Well, I don't know. It's like that's in his Facebook name. It's in his Twitter name, too. Hot shot's <laughs> apparently a thing. Hot right? shot. So, this is hot shot uh, Lund. I'm trying, right. I, I can't uh, uh, Okay, here we go. So Blunt and Long have a chance to win back-to-back with different teams since which player? So what other player... Was able to do that Ooh. with back-to-back teams. You're gonna have to tell me the answer because I'm not sure, uh, Adam. So you better put that on. Uh, uh, back-to-back teams. Uh, James Harris. No, no, no. no. Um, oh. I know this seems like this should be a pretty obvious uh, uh, trivia question. Randy Moss. No. Wow. It. It. I think it's going to be so obvious. I, it is going to be obvious, and and for some reason Seattle's popping out in my head. A player from Seattle. Ooh. Um. I I just asked him for the answer on this one. Right. Well, I I, I you know what? Oh, prime time, Deion Sanders. Oh, Good. Atlanta Falcons uh, and Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> there you there go. go. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right. Good job, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> any any final okay, dog got it. Hey, dog. <laughs> any any final thoughts, Chris? Before we get out of here, no. It's been fun uh, interacting with you guys out there. Mike Williams had a comment, but I'm not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, thanks for the thought, Mike Williams. <laughs> All right. Don't read it. Don't even read his name. Before we get out of here, um, I got to send a shout Bill's out to fan. our sponsors again. Uh, next Tuesday, <laughs> make sure you're at the Fox to get yourself some Moose Light. This stuff is scary good. Scary good. And uh, if you need hats, shirts, jackets, this shirt that I'm wearing tonight comes from the Doyle's Corporate Image Group. And I'm wearing it so I can, it's my way of saying to Brett, I'm sorry about my comments about uh, <laughs> your buddy, Gronk. Gronkowski. Gronkalicious. All all. right. Uh, And again, if your kitchen sucks, if your kitchen sucks, make sure you get out and get yourself some done right sauce. You quit your bitching and fix that kitchen. Fix that kitchen. (laughs) With this stuff. Before before we get out, I just got a couple things I want to mention. I want to congratulate. Two years ago, my wife was preparing for chemotherapy. This past weekend, it's been uh, about 10, 15 years she uh, has been skiing. We went to Poli Mountain. She was shredding like crazy. Might have had one wipeout, but she had a great day on the hill. We had a blast. I also want to send out a big shout-out. If, if there's a Patriots fan out there that I missed hearing from this weekend, it was Mike Fougier. This guy is the best Pats fan out there. Uh, I love the razzing that goes between him and I during football season. Uh, Mikey uh, is down in St. John. He's got a, a health issue he's working on. But, yep. Mike, big shout-out to you. we got to get you back. Uh, text to me. I, I need to hear your comments during the football games. Lastly, 
Before we get out of here, you may know by this music, Chris. Yep. Rocky. This Super Bowl Rocky four. reminds me of Rocky IV. Yeah. <laughs> of course, Nick Foles is playing the role of Rocky, and that Dan Brady's playing the role of Drago. Drago! <laughs> and of course, the Patriots fans are all the damn Russians! <laughs> You better be at the Fox next week. We expect you to show up at the debate and bring it. Bring it, Patriots fans, because you lost last year. See you next week. Have a great week, guys. Thanks, guys. Drago! 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 Drago!